I'm one of the owners of Volt Energy, a multi-million dollar solar energy company in the industry that's predominantly owned by white males. And I'm proud to announce that we, along with uh, Solar City slash Tesla, have partnered together and we will be putting solar on eight different buildings on Howard's campus. The reason I get up every morning and passionate about what I'm doing is that when you look at uh, communities of color, our communities, we pay more for energy. There's a power plant typically in our community. So part of what we want to do is to reverse that, but also create wealth in our communities, create jobs. Firstly, thank you for coming out to tell us about your company and just spending some time with us. You were originally a finance major. What resources did you use to like increase your knowledge like relating to renewable energy? I wasn't afraid to tackle hopping into an industry that is very technical. I went to a lot of conferences to just understand what is clean energy. Volt Energy is a solar development firm. We finance and build solar assets. So we pay for all the upfront expenses and then the organization or the company is buying cheaper electricity, no upfront capital expenditures, and they're reducing their carbon footprint. So it's a win-win for everyone. Howard University wants to ensure that we are always contributing to sustainability and uh, making a positive impact on the earth in which we live. I anticipate that our students are going to have a phenomenal time learning about the new technology and using it as well. This will be beautiful. It'll have, I'm biased of course, but you'll have a sea of blue solar panels covering the entire roof that's producing clean electricity that the university will be using and saving money in the process. And uh, once the panels are up, they're about this high off the ground and you, they won't even be able to see it from the street. One of the most exciting aspects of this project is the student engagement, and it started with some of the buildings that with the conceptual designs. And as we continue, um, we're going to have students in multiple different schools within the university. Business school students will work on the financial modeling. When I was a student, I used to walk all around campus and to be back uh, having my own company and putting solar in my university. It's just such a wonderful feeling. I'm so excited about this project. We're in the midst of a solar boom. If you look at current jobs being created, one out of every 50 new jobs is in solar. Also, solar energy is growing uh, 17 times faster than the national economy here in the U.S. However, African Americans only make up 7% of the solar workforce, so there's still a lot of work to be done. It's a passion for me and my business partner, Antonio Francis, to go back into our communities, talk to students, talk to people about clean energy. What are the job opportunities? What are the opportunities to start your own company and create real wealth? A lot of people think solar is just the physical labor of putting panels on a roof, but it's a lot more than that. Uh, there's a lot of engineering involved from people who do modeling. Uh, we also have civil engineers, and then we even have electrical engineers. So coming back home, we're uh, extremely excited. Thank you. Could you just give an example of like one of your uh, most recent projects that you did, like helping a like a university or a company, and how like one of us, like an undergraduate, like electrical computer engineer, how we would help. Excellent, excellent question. So I will use Howard as an example, um, right here. Even you know, first thing we need to talk about is what's the value for the university. So although we know solar energy works, although we know that there's some tax credits available and that it's the right thing to do from an environmental perspective. The president of a university and the uh, people who run the facilities had to find out how can I cut down my bottom line. Uh, so from a computer engineering perspective, one of the critical things in solar is it's measurable. Let's run a model, we'll show what the sun radiance will be in this part of the world, and we're able to look at historical data, and then we're able to model this over the next 20 years. It's very intense on the engineering side because now we have to go back to the engineers and say, how does it look? So you have a lot of CAD involvement. I guess we should not forget that engineering is not just technical. We must participate in the world that we want to see. Therefore, black people involved in energy suggest that we will not only be part of the change that we want to see, but we'll be part of the development of that change. And I believe that at Howard, this is what we stand for. <laughs> I think the reason that we don't see as many minorities in renewables is really just exposure. Uh, a lot of times, even as I was growing up, I wasn't exposed to certain industries that are now uh, industries that are very common. And I believe by more inclusion, you're going to have a lot of out-of-box thinkers, uh, creative solutions, and it's just better for all. Some of our clients include the Cheesecake Factory. Uh, that project was secured by my business partner, Barry Shockett. 
We installed solar at uh, City Hall in D.C. Hepco Holdings. We installed solar at Fort Bragg Military Base. I had the distinct honor of being recognized by President Obama's White House, where I was named the White House Champions of Change for Climate Equity. And we've done a lot at educational institutions. Uh, we've done a project at Wake Forest University and KIPP DC, the charter school. A lot of my competitors in the solar industry tend to shy away from doing projects like with churches and nonprofits because it's hard to scale them. But we look at it from a vantage point of we're looking to make an impact in communities. You can see around us, we have 645 uh, solar panels installed. We're projected to save $25,000 over the course of the year. But we have a mandate, a divine mandate, in our scripture that says that we are supposed to be environmental stewards. We've done that miserably. We see this in our decision as a country to withdraw from the Paris Accord Agreement. We see this uh, in increasing pollution and increasing illegal waste in cities, creating a public health crisis in poor black, brown communities all across our nation and our world. We as leaders need to do a better job of helping people to understand the biblical traditions that support sustainable efforts to create a cleaner and safer environment. One voice standing up can really make a difference in inspiring and motivating others to help to create an environmental revolution that's necessary within our churches and in our world. I look at it as a mission. We won't rest until we know that we've uh, hit the tipping point, and at that point, I think we'll come up with a lot more ideas that a lot of other companies could uh, be involved in to keep re taking us in the right direction. I would say to someone that's been left behind, whether it's a coal worker in West Virginia or um, an African American in Detroit, is that we're not going back to a coal economy, but reaching a handout and saying, here's a new industry, and we'd like for you to be a part of it. See, that's a, to me, that's one of the biggest things that we can do as a company.